now we're going to speak about how those uh, mechanical conditions constant strain and constant stress how they affect the dielectric permittivity so again constant strain is a clamped condition you're not allowing the material to move or in constant stress is you are either imposing a constant force but most often times you are just you know no 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 external forces and now we're going to see how this affects uh, these material properties so let's try it now we have a material and we are not going to clamp we're not going to clamp it so let's say it has a polarization vector going that way it has a voltage potential across of it and we let's say we want to make it smaller because that's easier to draw things are getting smaller things are getting bigger and it's not that easy to draw so we're going to assume there's a positive potential here and a negative potential here negative potential here so this will cause an electric field to go across that way this electric field will cause this material to shrink and it'll also cause charges to appear so first of all we're going to have positive charges on the outside here negative charges on the outside here and therefore you know whatever material whatever molecules in here is going to reorient with regards to the well, let's just draw the actual picture of the individual uh, charges or atoms so the originally the dipole is facing this way so he wants to go there and she wants to go there they're both trying to change positions and get and the dust the material gets smaller so my question is on the external perspective how do we define again now I'm gonna ask you a little harder question how do you define dielectric permittivity well dielectric permittivity is defined by the linear relationship between polarization and electric field but actually now we're not going to talk about polarization we're going to talk about uh, dielectric displacement but for the for the time being it's, it's sufficient to talk about this so how much polarization is given for an electric field and we can do that we can measure it let's say it's like this the slope is the permittivity so right now uh, normally we looked at this problem from a uh, mechanical perspective that we have a strain we have a stress which we're not applying but we're going to put that in for completion and we have an electric field but we're not going to be considering this we want to know from an electrical perspective we're applying an electric field you know what kind of charge there's some type of permittivity of our permittivity question mark there's some type of permittivity we're applying and that is going to cause some polarization, right? In both cases, whether uh, we have a we're connected or we're not connected, we can still write the same. We can still write the equations. So, what kind of permittivity is it? Well, there's kind of a hint here. There's only two types of permittivities I mentioned: constant strain and constant stress. We're not applying any uh, stresses here, so we're going to have a permittivity of constant stress. And this does with and this and this results in the outward polarization um, that we see. This outward electric field, which is caused, is due to that po that uh, uh, electric field. So what is so we can find the electric field, or the charges induced in this case, uh, by considering two functions. By first considering the piezoelectric contribution and we can also consider the uh, regular dielectric uh, contribution so how so essentially we use the um, constant stress case for a free condition and this is the this is the uh, electric field
and for the other case where we have a clamped clamp condition we are going to use the polarization which is equal to the electric field under constant strain now we're going to go over which one should be higher and which one should be lower so again we have the polarization in two terms constant strain I mean the permittivity and constant stress so really just like the you know this term right here this polarization when we are applying an electric field in a constant stress condition we are both storing electrical and mechanical energy why do we say that the material is changing shape it's getting bigger let's apply that light, light electric field again the material is getting bigger uh, voltage we're, and we're storing charge plus minus plus minus plus minus plus minus plus minus, plus minus, plus minus. So, and we're storing charge. Therefore, we have to store more energy. And because we're storing more energy, we have to have a higher permittivity. But in this case, if you consider this again, we have this here. And we kind of glued it down. So, we'll draw the glue in gray. We glued it down. And uh, let's say the, the strain is going to be zero. It's not going to move at all. So we're not storing no mechanical energy. Only electrical energy. And because we're not storing mechanical energy, and we're only storing electrical energy, the permittivity is going to be smaller. So we have EX, capital X, the stress, is bigger and EX because the electrical stored energy or uh, holistically you know from the outward power supply perspective uh, it's greater when we, it's a function that's directly proportional to the uh, epsilon so therefore we have a larger energy here than here and uh, this was the explanation of how the mechanical boundary conditions affect the permittivity and affect the energy stored. So now, finally, as promised, we're going to go over, and we're fully, I think, hopefully now we're capable, as though I alluded to it about 100 times, now we're capable of understanding this k squared term, also known as the electromechanical coupling factor. Thanks for listening.